We are a building and remodeling contractor. We do everything from build a new house from the ground up to install a couple of grab bars. We are do full service of a building and remodeling with a focus on accessibility and the aging in place. Uh, a number of years ago, um, in fact, right after 08, when the new building construction industry uh, pretty much fell off the cliff along with most of the economy, I was looking for a new direction to go in. And about that time, my mom and dad, who had been living in Arizona in an age-restricted community for a number of years, uh, moved back to town and needed a little help. My mom had had a stroke. And so um, I started figuring out how we were gonna do some things to, to their house to make it easier for her to come in and out and, and get around, use the bathroom and so on and so forth. And so I started to do some research and I figured out that there's many people who are in the same boat. They wanna stay in their homes, but they don't get around as well as they used to. Maybe they're having some cognitive issues or some sensory issues and their homes just really don't work well for them anymore. And so since that time, I've become more and more involved with, you know, what's called aging in place, simply the idea that people would stay in their own homes as long as they choose to, rather than moving into some sort of senior living facility. We do a lot of work for um, disabled veterans through a number of different grants and it's very satisfying to be able to help some of these veterans to um, have a home that's a little bit safer and easier for them to get around in. What's interesting because I mean the, the term aging in place in and of itself suggests that there's a certain age when you know you might begin to have problems and in point of fact um, People of any age can, can have issues. Some people are born with conditions that uh, make it difficult for them to uh, get around and do some of the things that most of us take for granted. Uh, other people are, are involved in, in traumatic events like an automobile accident that you know, can very much change your, your functioning overnight. And so I recommend that we use an approach that's often called universal design that's simply to Let's create homes that work for everybody at all times to, as much as possible. And then if you were to experience one of these traumatic events, if you were to have someone come visit you who maybe uses a wheelchair for uh, mobility or uh, any number of other reasons that having an accessible home might be helpful and you know conducive to your well-being. So uh, really, I recommend that, you know, in a perfect world, all homes would be would be designed and built in such a way that pretty much everybody could use them regardless. Uh, studies have shown that only 15% of us go through our entire lives without having some kind of mobility impairment. Maybe it's temporary, we broke our leg skiing, or maybe it's more permanent, we have a, a progressive condition, or you know, just simply the, the ravages of aging are, are catching up with us. So we, we say Peter Pan housing. Of course, Peter Pan was the little boy that never grew up. And so we use Peter Pan housing as a metaphor for houses that are built for people that never grow old. And so um, houses that are, the, the doorways are too narrow, the hallways are too narrow, uh, there's, there's too many steps, the bathrooms are too small and slippery and dangerous. And so um, most of the houses in this country and frankly most of the world are, are built in this manner. They're built for um, you know, the mythological average person who is of average height and average weight and average functioning and can reach, you know, the average height countertop without any trouble at all. And that's, that's a very small group of people that actually, you know, fit into that, you know, that normal bell curve distribution, if you will. And so, what we what we often do is we are we're called in by people who love their homes and love their neighborhoods and but they're struggling they're struggling with you know getting in and out of the front door they're struggling with you know getting in and out of the bathroom and, and taking a shower and you know washing their hands and and doing things of that nature and so um probably those are the two most common modifications that we're asked to, to change, to create at least one zero step entry somewhere into the home that you can get from the car, the vehicle into the home without any steps, and to make a bathroom that's safe and functional and accessible for people of various abilities. And 
the, the bathroom renovations would be things like a wider doorway, would be, you know, slip resistant flooring, would be uh, a curbless shower that can be easily gotten into without uh, fear of falling, um, roll under sinks, uh, grab bars, things of that nature. They're thinking in terms of, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the grab bars they've seen at the hospital or the, you know, they've seen a, a um, you know, accessible hotel room that may or may not have been done very well. Um, and certainly the, the whole idea of, of changing your home to accommodate changing needs can be a difficult conversation to have. Nobody wants to, you know, it's not the kind of uh, dinner table conversation that people are, are eager to have, you know, oh, you know, maybe one day I won't be able to, to walk as well as I do. Won't that be exciting? No, people don't, don't think that way. They, they, you know, bury their head in the sand. They put off, you know, thinking about this. People are often in denial about what their needs are. They think that if they make these changes that they are somehow surrendering to the ravages of aging. I prefer to think of it as they're being smart planners and they are helping to ensure their independence as they uh, live in their homes. So that being said, um, like any other kind of, of renovations, I'm sure most people have seen remodels that people have done to their homes that you know were not attractive without regard to whether they were accessible or not. Um, if you choose a reputable contractor, if you do your due diligence and you know, you kind of make sure that the changes you're making fit in nicely with the decor of your home and are done well with good craftsmanship and attention to detail, then, you know, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have a, a home that's more user friendly, that's um, more comfortable to live in and also is, is beautiful. I like to say we create homes that are safe, beautiful, and accessible for people of all ages and abilities. The value of, the of what the value of a home is, is, is a formula that has many moving parts. It has to do with the neighborhood. It has to do with the economy. It has to do with what people are looking for at that particular point in time. And a lot of that is driven by, you know, just consumer sentiment. And as I've said, I've seen people who who see a home that, that maybe has a grab bar, that maybe has a ramp at the front door. And that to them is, is not what they're looking for. It suggests that somebody lived there who is struggling with disabilities. So, but the more and more people who um, know others, maybe it's an aging parent, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's a, another relative who has, you know, struggled with these things and, and they've seen how beneficial these features can be, especially if they're done well in a tasteful manner, that the, the market over time changes and these things are, are more sought after. In fact, I've talked to many people who have, you know, are looking for an accessible home. They're looking for a home that has these features and can't find one. So um, as the population ages, you know, we're, we're seeing 10,000 people a day turning 65. More and more people are starting to consider these kinds of changes, especially people who have been a caregiver for a, for a parent or another loved one. So uh, I think those perceptions are changing over time. It's important to individuals because people want to stay in their homes. I mean, they live there for a reason in the first place because they like the neighborhood, they like the house, they like, you know, the idea of living independently. Most people are not uh, you know, excited about going to a congregate living facility, no matter how, how beautiful and, and wonderful the place may be, it's not home. And so people, um, it's important to individuals and families because of the people are happier at home, they're healthier at home, they recover uh, more quickly, um, and their quality of life is, is just better. I think it's important for society because I think we do a disservice when we take those people who have lived a full life and are full of wisdom, full of knowledge, have so much to teach us, have so much that we can learn from, and we sequester them in a, you know, in their own little community and, and remove them from, from the little children and from the young couples and from the, you know, the, the rest of society. And so I think, you know, sometimes you hear in play, in, rather than aging in place, you hear aging in community, just the idea of that you know, people would remain in community, we would get the benefit of all their years of wisdom and understanding, 
and that benefits all of us. Well, we have a number of resources. We have a, a planning guide that helps people kind of walk through this process. Um, we have a lot of information on our website, and uh, that's solidrockenterprises.com. Uh, you're welcome to call our office at 540-384-2064 for more information. 